Hello, thirsty artists. Today, I'll be teaching you how to draw thirsty hair. Freak Boys Edition. Today, I will your brain so hard you'll die and reincarnate as art god. So, as usual, go to pinterest.com and type hair. Pinterest already knows my type of biologically aesthetic humans. I don't even need to type hot. Ooh, nice hair there, buddy. I'm gonna copy paste you. Nice neck. Copy paste. I started drawing the facial structure first. Okay, I'll speedrun what I did here. Basically, circle, line of symmetry, shape of the face, and then the ears. Now, it is important to get the head right because if you you F this up, the outcome would be all along Donified. You don't want that. Now, of course, hairline is important. And did you know that the line between the mouth and this intersection, which is the start of the nose, is the same length between this intersection and the hairline? Not sure if that is anatomically correct, but that's the proportion of my face. So take that tip as a rest. And then add this letter Z and this thing. Just added a pretty face. Big design, am I right? Don't forget the headbutt, okay? That's where the shape grow from. I usually divide the hair in 3 to 4 main shapes like 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, tutorials are like draw a shape and then BADAM! Rendered. But like how? Hairs are just shapes, right? But how do you make the shape a hair? One might think that since it is a hair, you draw them per strands. Inception. Hairs are shapes with some strands. Have you seen a hairdresser cut your hair per strand? No. So, to break down the hair, you first have to find the main shape. Shapes. The headbutt typically divides the first two sections of the hair, one and two. Just identify the other main sections. Next, you must take note of the flow. Like, look, hairs have a sense of direction, so we have to take them into consideration while we draw the hair. Now, shapes plus flow plus some strands is equals hair, okay? Bonus tip, the strands show the flow of the shape, so make sure that when adding strands, you have the goal in mind to tell the direction of the hair. The way I draw strands is by using three types of curvy lines. First line is curved letter V. As you can see here, this is typically seen in anime hairstyles. Pointy, like my pimple. They are usually used at the end of the hair. This type of strand is mostly used in freak boys type of hair. The last two lines I use are most often used in longer hair, so you won't often see them in short haircuts. Second is a curvy line at the middle, and when I stop, I draw another curvy line next to it to finish the strand. I usually use this to divide the main shape. The last is curvy zigzags with varying size. Not like this, but like this, okay? You could also put a gap between them, like the previous type of line, but the main thing is that these are hella curvy and zigzaggy. I don't know the reason why these lines work, they just do. Now, of course, this will be erased soon enough since we're going to render the shit out of it by suffering more. Now, coloring. So, use the lasso tool for the color block. I know there's a lot of other ways that you can color, but this is just my thing, you know? Okay, then clip a folder because we're going to do all the initial coloring inside the big black void of folder. I added some strands for hair-like feel, you know, for the flow. Then I added a multiply layer for the shadows and an overlay layer for the light. I eye drop the darkest color and use that to add definition. Since I am drawing below the multiply and overlay, the colors are adjusted depending on the shadows and lighting. I use the line art as a guide to know where I should put the darker shade. Like, like I'm just basically tracing art, hashtag cheating. Then I proceeded with the rendering. It is easy peasy to say render, but how do you render? Okay, so example, this is the section of the hair. Add the multiply and overlay layer, yada yada, like what I said earlier. Then use the hardest round brush and paint it here at the bottom like this. Then I eye dropped the lightest color and colonized the darker area. Repeat the process until it is aesthetically pleasing enough. Take note that at this point I am painting on top of the multiply and overlay layer. This means that the color I eye dropped are not adjusted anymore. And then I'll use this brush called brush pen, a very fine and creative name for a brush. Brush pen. Then I'd like to do this overlapping thing where you eye drop the lightest part and draw a strand of hair to a darker color. In a way, it adds depth, but don't overdo it. Then I added these sharp straight lines, straighter than me and sharper than dreams. Repeat the process until you are satisfied. Obligatory addition of saliva. At this point, I may have made a mistake to not use the reference, but anyway, I think this is where you say just trust the process. I don't know why, but they are helpful in adding depth and interesting color in the hair. Very, very suffering. I usually add them between the shadows and the lightest part of the hair. Okay, time to be scientists now. Bazam, bazam, bzzz. Gym. And it's 
better. This is the tone curve if anyone is curious. Now it's hella better. It makes your drawing look high F. Lower the opacity for low key effect, and that's it. Also, this hair looks like a shiny polished leather shiz, fur fur. Now, make sure to practice drawing and have patience figuring out how hair works, because if you won't, all the things I said won't mean crap since most probably by tomorrow y'all forget it. So go grab a pencil and draw. Oh, not motivated enough to draw? Okay, well let me tell you. There are 12 to 14 year old artists out there better than you at drawing. I know, 14 year old psychopaths. Please subscribe and like if you learned a thing or two and enjoyed the video for fur. Also, I just want to thank everyone who subscribed from the last video. I was at 16 subs and then it became this. Whoa, I love cloud chasing. So please subscribe to feed my ego, I mean my motivation. So yeah, that's all. Thirsty or not, stay hydrated, thirsty artists.